So let's continue with the math section in Strivers A to Z DSA course. So before that, hey viewer, come back to the channel and hope you guys are doing extremely well. So the problem that we will be solving today is power expo. So what is the problem exactly stating? It is stating that you will be given a value x, you will be given a value n. As of now, assume that both of them are integer and both of them are positive numbers. We'll talk about uh, double and negatives afterwards. Let's understand the algorithm in terms of positive and then it's very easy to convert it into negatives and double. So let's assume I'm giving you x equal to 2 and n equal to 5. So the value of 2 to the power 5 is 32, right? So they have to return me power 2 comma 5, which is basically 2 to the power 5, which is 32. This is what you'll have to return me. Now, in C++ STL collections, you'll find this method power that implements this internally. But what is the algorithm behind it? Let's understand that. But before that, what is the extreme naive solution that you can think of? Very simple. Answer equal to 1 for i equal to 1 till n and answer will be answer into x. Simple, right? And the time complexity will be b go of n. Obviously, this is not uh, the optimal solution. So what will be the optimal solution? It's very simple. Now, in order to understand the optimal solution, I'll take bigger values. So let's take a bigger value like uh, n equal to 2. It's a smaller value, x. So in order to understand what I'll do is, I'll take x to be 2, but I'll take the n to be a slightly bigger value, something like, uh, let's take 21. Yeah, that will be great. So I'll have to find 2 to the power 21. How do I do it? It's very, very simple. I'll keep answer as 1 initially when I start off with, right? And I take 21 and I ask, hey, uh, are you even? And he says, no, I'm odd. So if it is odd, what I do is, so technically what I need to find is 2 to the power 21, right? What I do is I take 1, 2 out and I write 2 into 2 to the power 20. Now what I'm asking you to do is find 2 to the power 20. So 2 is gone. Now since you're taking away uh, 2, since you're taking away 2, I'll ask you to add it to the answer. I'll ask you to add it to the answer. Perfect. I've taken away 1. So n becomes 20. So now we're trying to find 2 to the power 20. Now this power 20, this time is an even power. Whenever it is an even power, can I write this as 2 square 20 by 2? Can I write this? I think I can because standard maths, right? Standard maths, 2 and 2 will go up and it is still 2 to the power 20. 2 square and 20 by 2. Does make sense? This time, if I do this, this will become 4 to the power 10. So now what I'm trying to find is x is 4 and n becomes 20. I did a drop of by 2. I reduced n by by 2 straight away. That's an optimization. And the only thing I did was I multiplied x by x itself. 2 squared x by x itself. 2 into 2, 4. Okay, perfect. Now what am I looking to do? Let me erase this. Now what am I looking to do? Now my x is 4. n is 10, right? So again, it's an even number. So I'm trying to find 4 raised to the power 10. It's an even one. Can I again write it as 4 squared 10 by 2? I can because 2 and 2 will go up. And this is nothing but 16 raised to the power 5. So I again changed to x. I just multiplied 4 to 4 itself and I got 16. And the 10 was converted to 5. Again by 2. Straight away. A massive optimization. Just multiplying 4 by 4. Okay. Now what is the next thing? This time I'm looking to find 16 raised to the power 5. And this time I see that the power is an odd one. 5 is odd. So again I'll do the same thing. I'll try to take it towards even. 16 into 16 to the power 4. So I'll take out a 16. 
I'll multiply that to the answer. And I'll multiply that to the answer. Perfect. And so I'll take this 16 out. I'll take this 16 out. And this time, this 5 gets converted to 4. Slight drop. Not a lot of drop. Okay, perfect. Now what is the next thing? The next thing is, we have 4. So we're trying to find 16 raised to the power 4. You know what to do. 16 squared, 4 by 2. So what will happen is, this will become 256 raised to the power 2. Again a massive drop of by 2. And this x will be 256. Perfect. Now what am I trying to find? x is 256, n is 2. 256 raised to the power square. So this time it will be 256 into 2, basically 256 square 2 by 2. It is the same thing, right? So 2 will get converted into 1 and 256 square. So this will become now. 256 into 256 is 65536. A big number. Hence, now I'm left with 65536 and this is 1. Okay. Now, it's odd. It's odd. So whenever it is odd, what do we do? We take out 1 out. So it'll be like 65536. Five, I'll take out 1 out. Uh, and I'll keep 1 minus. So 1 minus 1. I've taken 1 out. That's something raised to the power 0. And I know this is always 1. So I'll take this out. I'll take this out. Remember you're taking this out. So if you're taking this out, this will drop to 0. And this will have 2, 5, 5. The answer will get multiplied with 6, 5, 5, 3, 6. Done. And since you have reached something raised to the power 0, you stop because anything raised to the power 0 is always 1. So your answer is this. And you're multiplying. While you are moving along, you're multiplying 1 is 2. That was uh, 2 into 16. That was 32. And now this will be multiplied, which is 6, 5, 5, 3, 6. You can do a multiplication. That's a big number. So this is how you can easily do it. I did show you for two. You can do it for other numbers as well. Let me quickly give you one more example. If I ask three raised to the power nine, I'll be taking answer equal to one. Let's start. So I'll take a three out. That'll be three into three to the power eight. So this three will go and get added to this. After this, I'm solving for three raised to the power eight. So it'll be like three square eight by two. That's 4. So 3 square is 9 raised to the power 4. So I'm trying to solve 9 raised to the power 4. This time, I'll be taking 9 square. It's the same thing. So I'm trying to solve 81 raised to the power 2. Correct? So again, I'll do the same thing. 81 square, 1. So 81 square, again a big number. I can again take my calculator out. 81 into 81 is 6561. 6, 5, 6, 1, raised to the power 1. So again, a odd, odd power. In case of odd power, you know what happens. You take 1 out, and then you write 6, 5, 6, 1. You reduce the power by 1. The 6, 5, 6, 1 goes away and gets multiplied over here. And eventually, you are left with something raised to the power 0, which is 1. So you stop. So your answer is getting computed. Very, very simple. Very, very straightforward. If I have to write down the pseudocode, it will be, let's write the function where you get an x and an n. And you'll be taking an answer equal to 1. So you take your answer as 1. And now you'll be doing it till n is greater than 0. And it'll be like, okay, hey, listen. If n is an odd number, I know one thing. I take 1 out. Answer equal to answer into x. I'll take 1x out. So thereby, the power reduces by 1. The power reduces by 1. But it, if it is an even power, in that scenario, what happens is, the power gets reduced, uh, reduced by 2, but x gets multiplied by x itself. And at the end of the day, I can straight away return the answer. What am I doing? In most of the cases, I'm dividing it by 2. I'm trying to reach an even number when I'm trying to reduce it by 1. Why am I reducing it by 1? Because I'm trying to reach an even number. So I'm reducing, like dividing it by 2, by 2, by 2 every time. 
So thereby, whenever you divide by 2, divide by 2 for any certain number, the time complexity is always set to be logarithmic base to n. So the loop will be running for logarithmic base to n. There will be some instances when you'll reduce by 1, but most of the instances, as you saw in the examples we took, were getting divided by 2. Got it? So this is how it will look like. The power method works in a similar fashion. And let's come back to our main problem. What if I say, uh, again, this n, what if I say this one can be negative as well? Can be negative, can be positive. Can be negative as well. So if I ask you, 5 raised to the power minus 2, what is the value? Isn't it equivalent to saying 1 by 25 or 1 by 5 squared? So I can simply compute 5 square and if the power is negative, I just divide the answer by 1 by answer. Very simple. Very simple. If the power is negative, I just divide the answer by 1. Like 1 by answer. That's what I do. So what I can do is, since n is getting reduced, I can store it as m equal to n. And at the end of the day, I can say if m was lesser than 0, Answer will be 1 by answer. Very simple and straightforward. Now, other question. What if this x is a double? 2.5, what if? In that scenario, just go back and assign the answer to be a double. That is all you need to do. And make sure when you're dividing, you do it as 1.2 by answer. So this is how the pseudo code looks like. The C++, Java, Python, JavaScript code will be given in the description. You can check them out. I hope you have understood. And the space complexity is definitely B go of 1 because I'm just using an answer variable, nothing else. So that will be it for this one. So I hope you understood everything. And if that is the case, please, please do consider giving us a like. And if you're new to our channel, do consider subscribing to us as well. With this, I'll be wrapping up this video. Let's meet in some other video. Till then, bye-bye. Take care. Whenever your heart is broken.